Welcome back to Carnades.org. Today we're going to be continuing with our series, Six Months of Set Theory and Higher Order Logic, looking at what is a basic universe. So, so far we've learned about what sets and classes are and some properties that they possess, or they may possess. <clears throat> However, we have not clearly shown or posited that any of these sets actually exist. The axiom of separation gives us the existence of classes. Remember that existence part is for the B, the class, not for the X, the set, but not sets. We can show that something like the empty class exists, but we have yet to show that it is a set. And I've been using the terms set and class relatively interchangeably so far with the understanding that most of these properties apply to both of them. But we haven't shown that any sets really exist. Remember, classes are subclasses of the universal class, V, while sets are elements of the universal class. We have yet to show that any sets exist or that all sets are classes. Though we've been saying it a lot because we're going to prove it eventually, and it's good to get it in your mind as something that's there, but we haven't shown it, and we haven't proven it yet, and we haven't found the axioms that will help us do it. But we will do that soon. In order to do that, we will need a set of axioms. This month, we're going to look at axioms 1 through 4. In the next month of the series, when we look at set operations sometime early next year, I'm shooting for February, but we'll see how much time I have, we'll look at axioms 5 through 6. In future months of the series, we might explore the options of adding, the axiom of infinity, the axiom of substitution, but that's a long way off. And for a basic universe, or for a universe to be basic, the only thing we need are the first six axioms. The only purpose of these axioms will be to define what types of classes are actually sets and what types are not. In other words, what the members of the universal class actually are. The question is, what are the members of the universal class? Because the universal class is going to end up being infinite, we can't list them all out. So we have to simply give rules or things that say, if something follows this rule, then it's a member of the universal class. If something follows this rule, then it's a member of the universal class. We can't explicitly list them in curly brackets like we might do for a finite set. And that is going to be where the axioms come in. The axioms are going to be the rules that define what is a set and what is not. Just like modal logic had a basic system K with a set of axioms, so does set theory. As with modal logic, the more axioms you add to the basic universe, the more complicated and controversial things get. That's why we're taking things slow for now. The basic universe with the first six axioms is relatively uncontroversial at least within this part of set theory of set class theory. Getting above that gets slightly more controversial, and we'll tackle that controversy when we get to it. But for now, up next, transitivity of a basic universe, axiom one. Watch this video and more here at carnades.org, and watch a brand new video every single day for the whole month of October. And stay skeptical, everybody.